Hello, and today we'll be looking at my Minecraft world. Minecraft is a game that I discovered semi-recently. Um, I am not the most knowledgeable about it, haven't been playing for super long. I am having a good time, and I thought I'd show you what I've built since I started playing. Now I believe that the the Neither has hel had um, has had biomes since a little bit before I started playing, so it really hasn't been that long. Although I have been diving fairly deep into it, haven't yet really mastered mechanisms, and I thought I, I, I navigated myself roughly to zero zero in my world to show you what I did as I was starting out. So I started out in the woods and I realized, well, it's gonna be a lot of effort to clear all this out. Let's see if I can find a better place to settle. I wandered through, probably went down there. Um, and eventually I found, oh, uh, there is a nice bit of land up there. And there was a little mountain pass through here that I expanded out since. And I went to find my first base. And so this is the first base that I made in Minecraft. I've modified it a lot since. It didn't have this pit under it, uh, under it initially. I was also just really barely starting to learn my stuff. I think I'd actually just plopped a bed down on top of the mountain initially after I figured out how to make one of those. But now, so I built that on much shorter ground, but zombies kept on bothering me when I tried to sleep. And so I dug beneath it to hopefully get enough distance between me and them. And eventually, much later, I added the water and added the magma pit because I just found it hilarious to have the water sweeping zombies into there where they would burn up. I These are my very early attempts at farming. Um, it was kind of successful back when I was eating a lot of bread. It wasn't particularly amazing, and it turns out that monsters kept on dropping down on top of here and stomping my crops uh, flat, so that was annoying. Anyhow, one of the things I discovered early on is that monsters are not good jumpers, and so if you have a gap like this that you don't mind jumping over, then you don't need to worry about them coming right up to your door. So that was cool. Um, and so here I have just a reasonable set of crafting things. And uh, I typically would have like stone and wood and other materials like that there. I think I later ended up splitting this up a little bit to more like dusts and wood. And then I would have miscellaneous stuff over here. And much later on, I started always keeping some backup uh, gear in case I got killed. And then uh, some neither stuff. So that worked out pretty well. And you'll... Oh, looks like I've not been keeping this as empty as I thought I... I would. Tidiness and being organized is one of those things in life that are kind of important. But yeah, this space served me pretty well. Now, also when I started here, there was a valley here. Much more recently, I started cutting down some of the giant hills over here and there, and using the soil to get me a flat piece of land that would reach out over this former valley uh, country. And as you note, I or as you may note, I play Bedrock, uh, and I've not yet really done much in the way of multiplayer stuff. Now this flat plane has not extended as far, so I might eventually take it. And also, there's the kind of cool, kind of weird effect uh, that you can go under it. And I semi recently popped under here and dropped a little bit of light in, uh, down here. This was also, I believe, my initial. Descent into the underground. Uh, or, nope, not here. Somewhere around here. I have my initial pathway down under the ground. And yeah, there's... There is this annoying tendency. Just It's not bright enough to keep monsters out. Anymore. Ah, there it is. Yeah, this, this was originally how I got down into the underground. It was not a particularly organized descent. But a lot of my organizational habits came about much later on in the game. 
Now, some people, people play Minecraft for a lot of different reasons based on what they find exciting. For me, terraforming is kind of exciting. Exploring is pretty exciting. And taming the mysteries of the, of the world are kind of exciting. Um, if any of you are into a White Wolf series of games, uh, I would probably fit pretty well into being a Void Engineer. Um, but yes, yeah, so I have been building these things, I call them sky bridges, that, uh, that connect the different parts of the world that I've, uh, I've conquered. Also, this is, uh, this was my initial, uh, uh Nethergate, which is pretty near my first base. I didn't really have much in the way of other bases when I built this. I had a few. And we'll be taking a look at them. And I actually have all of these on a big spreadsheet that I use to keep track of interesting places. Now, first first thing we'll do, let's go and visit uh, what I call my mansion base. And no, it's, it's not a woodland mansion or anything exciting like that. It's just a particularly advanced base that is probably the, the most advanced of my of my location. It's certainly the most settled. It's the one I've spent the most time on. Um, and so off we go. So some of my sky bridges have rails, not all of them, and I eventually plan to rail pretty much everything. But it takes time. A lot of this is relatively untamed. A little bit of Netherrack here and there with flame atop it, just to mark my uh, locations, but not everywhere. So one of the early things I found was this village. And one of the first things I did with the village was uh, build, build myself a home, because I was imagining Let's fit in with the population. Let's see what they can do for you. Um, there's, there's that dilemma that you face with games like this, where do you prefer to explore a lot on your own? Do you want to read the wiki and spoil yourself uh, fully? I've done a mix. Um, now, somewhere... Do, do I have... No. Okay, I, I thought that maybe I kept my original stairwell down to the uh, village, but maybe I didn't. I'll be coming back here shortly. But for now, this is, this is a village I, I found fairly early, and I really liked what I saw. Um, and unfortunately, I think of much later on, most or maybe all of the villagers died in a uh, illager raid or a pillager raid. I can't keep illagers and pillagers straight. So there are no longer uh, villagers around. And that is annoying. I may have to uh, convert some zombies or otherwise get some uh, villagers back here because I, I would prefer that this not have this empty feeling. Um, but here is the... Uh, Here's what I initially built and where I lived. So I, I didn't fully empty this out when I moved out. Kept a bed, kept chest. I guess I'm keeping some bread down here so that if I get villagers again, I can have them breed. A little bit of crafting. I don't think I ever really had much more in the way of crafting. This has never been all that full. And here... Uh, it's a little bit of an earlier design. It's relatively flat, so you can just run over it. And this served me pretty well, and it was really nice having villagers around. I had various ways to get down under the ground. Um, I think this eventually became my preferred entrance to my mining area. It's a little bit messy and bumpy to get down there. I don't know if that's it, actually. There might have Was there another one? Or was that it? That might have been it. Yeah, I think I might be getting mixed up with somewhere else. So that served me pretty well, but if, uh, yeah, I think a um, creeper explosion blew up this structure here, which is a bit unfortunate. Creepers really, I'm, they're 
pretty frustrating. Um, so eventually I decided after I had a few more bases than this that I would like to have more room to really do more crafting and build more of the crafting tables. So I came up and I built this. And it took me a long time to build it. Didn't build it all in one, t one uh, go. I still kind of remember building those initial uh, high ceilings and uh, eventually getting enough glass to really have the nice glass ceilings and all that, building a map. I just uh, had a lot of fond memories in this place. And that's really the mark of a, of a good game, that you build memories in it. And in terms of an open world game, it's good that you keep on building memories and you have projects and stuff like that. So I have a lot of good stuff. I uh, have a little bit more in the way of crafting stuff. Looks like I've fairly often forgotten to empty my stuff out from... I think it's just that fairly often I would start those things melting something and then leave. Anyhow, a lot of good adventures. Um, more recently I've done art. You'll notice that I have carpet down all over the place. That was because pretty much no matter how much I tried to keep it lit, there were a few places where creepers could uh, spawn in. But then I read on the wiki that carpet prevents uh, uh, enemies from spawning. And so that is that has been my strategy. Um, yeah, some of these some of these books are pretty crazy. Although unfortunately, I haven't found much in the way of um, of mending books. And if I did, I would probably put mending on some of my other gear. Right now, only my sword has it. But I like my gear, uh, and all this is, is it's very nice. Like it's it's act it's a very good main base. It's just, it's a little annoying that it's far away from my nether gate or nether portal, but that's okay. So this has served me pretty well. And then, uh, so I have a number of these uh, sky bridges over to other bases. Most of them are not that interesting. Um, but then I thought, well, uh, once I started exploring the Neether and then eventually chilling out about ghasts, which I initially found terrifying. But if, uh, I, once I started doing a little bit of archery, stopped being particularly afraid of them because they are really easy to kill. Even though they can do a lot of damage to you if you're careful to be have a good amount of armor on. You don't have to worry that much. And then noticing that they're really easy to kill and learning how they move, well, I chilled out a lot and I started exploring the Neether a little bit more. Um, actually, I'll show you one more base that I that I have while, while we're in the area. So you can head over there. And... Uh, and so I developed a nomenclature, and I started a spreadsheet. And so the way I think of it, I have what I call my central area, which is negative to positive 1,000 and X and Z. And so it's just centered more or less around where I started the game. And anything in the central area, I will build uh, sk uh, my Skybridge uh, network over to, and eventually my sky rail network. Now where I'm taking you here is a relatively new base and I have not yet built uh, rail to it. But uh, one, once I started doing cartography, I re-explored, or I explored the central area pretty thoroughly and found both a few bases that I had built early and then forgotten. And I discovered that I had a um, pillager outpost not too far from uh, my uh, my initial base or my mansion base. And one of the things I, I like doing with these is, uh, I mean, I like invading them, but here I thought, why don't I try making it into a home? And so that's what I did. I took it over and I started building beds and crafting tables and stuff there, which is great. And it is a really neat structure but it's um, 
It's unfortunately the the pillagers keep on spawning. And I found that pretty frustrating because like I would leave and I would come back and there'd be I'd have to kill a bunch of them again. And it just never stopped. But then I read on the wiki that if you put down carpet, somehow that prevents uh, enemies from spawning. So I covered pretty much every inch of the every inch of the floor with uh, carpet. And now they don't spawn anymore. It's fully mine, and I have my own stuff going on here. Uh, the villagers, actually, this used to be a zombie base. So there were no uh, villagers, and um, there were just those annoying cobwebs and stuff like that. I, I haven't completely repaired everything, but I have removed the cobwebs. And I've resettled this village using golden apples and uh, potions of weakness. If, if you apply a potion of weakness to a zombie, and then you capture it, and then... Uh, and then you give it a golden apple, and then you just kind of stick around uh, nearby. Eventually, it will turn back into a villager. Now, what I've done here is I've built separate uh, containers for a whole bunch of sheep, and I've dyed the sheep. And this is pretty cool because when you dye a sheep and then you uh, you, tr you clip it, it's uh, it will keep its color, and its fur will grow back that color. And I have this fairly nice way of getting in and out because these, these things are a little too deep. So this lets me get in and out of individual, uh, individual cages to re retrieve the colored wool without worrying about... No, oh, shoot. Oh, oh, good, good. He didn't escape. Yeah, there are, they are unfortunately very keen to escape. But what this gives me long term is lots and lots of colored wool to build carpet out of. And also white wool to build paintings and all the other distinct things that you can do with white wool that you can't do with other colors. I've also captured a few skeleton horses over my uh, over my days. But uh, but yeah, I've I've revitalized this village. By converting two villagers and then giving them lots and lots of bread, they uh, they have um, repopulated the village, Aww. and some of them have some pretty useful uh, professions. Like here, I have a level four cartographer. Um, I'm not. Ah. I don't know what that is. I probably don't need it. Anyhow, um. So I've been trying to give these guys uh, experience so that I can b buy and sell su stuff to them. It's worked out pretty well. I'm very happy with this village. I love that I have a, a place to get wool and thus to have lots of fun, cool, different colored carpets. Um, I've experimented here and there with trying to build mechanized um, carpet retrie uh, retrievers. I have not yet built a design that works. And I know that I could just pull a design from somewhere else, but I'm not uh, I'm not super keen on doing that. Let's see, light, di light dye, white dye, yeah. I'll still keep these in a separate container. Oh, shoot, did not mean to do that. So, cool. So, this is where I... I um, this is where I get my carpet. Um, actually, I think I spotted a golden sword. I probably should fill the inside of this with some more stuff. That might be a, a good music room. Um, yes, let's drop this in here. Yeah, so that's my, um, my illager base. Um, it's good to spend time there. It's nice to have a place where there are lots of villagers because Minecraft can feel pretty lonely. Like, it's a little weird how empty the world is at times. And so the villagers help a little bit with that. Anyhow, as I was saying before, um, I 
have a nomenclature that I use. The central re region is negative 1,000 to positive 1,000 in X and Z. And then beyond that, I have bases that I primarily reach through the nether that I call uh, my far bases. And I, so I have one of them in each cardinal direction, um, plus X, minus X, plus C, minus C. And so once we get into my, uh, my nether, you'll see that I've built different kinds of passages in each direction. I also try to give, uh, nowadays I try and give each of my bases a bit of flavor just because I don't want things to be boring, or what's the point? And um, I use a lot of rail in the nether. Yeah, come on, separate out you guys. Um, also, a little bit more recently, I've been trying to light some of my sky bridges. Uh, they're too long to really imagine carpeting them entirely. But giving them some light makes it less likely that a, a creeper will spawn on top and blow uh, bits of them up, which even if you're zooming by in a rail, you're going to want to come back and prepare uh, the bridge because you can't really move by so quickly that the creeper won't blow up, even if you get out of its range by the time it does. And so I, I don't like needing to repair these uh, things, both because it's dangerous and because... Uh, it's annoying to have the supplies that you need to do that. <sighs> so we're heading back to the central area. And yeah, you, you do see that my rail network is pretty extensive. I have a lot of smaller bases. And also very occasionally for the far bases, I will connect them via skybridge as well. I have some of these uh, skybridges are incredibly long. Um, so I'll have at least one sky base in each cardinal direction, and eventually, uh, for some of the directions I've built a second, I'll probably get my way up to a second in each direction eventually, and maybe I'll head out to a third. But yeah, the, the far bases, um, the nomenclature I use is that I'll have a far base one north, far base one south, far base one east, and far base one west. Those are the first bases that are way off in a direction uh, through the nether. So I think we're well equipped. We're doing okay. Our gear, some of it's getting a little bit low. Be nice to fix some of the pickaxes. Okay, so one of the things I usually like to do is block off one of the exits to the nether to, to reduce any question as to what way I'm facing. Because if there's only one way to exit the portal, then even while the screen is still shimmering, uh, shimmering, I can get out of the portal. Now, when I first landed, I was in the edge of a big red cavern with gas, uh, with a ghast coming. Uh, we're very exposed to ghasts. That was no good. It was really pretty scary, particularly because I didn't know what I was doing, and so the gas would show up and blast me, and I would dodge and move back and kind of cower in the corner. Eventually I thought, well, I, I noticed that the gas would not shoot at me if it couldn't see me, so I started building a structure with all the stuff I brought in. Eventually I built this kind of weird kind of eyesight-blocking castle. <sighs> And that got the ghast off my back a little bit, and you'll notice, like, in each direction... Like, here is minus C. I have a passage. Over here is plus C. And so for minus X, my passage is up in the roof. For plus X, my passage is back here, and plus X is probably a good place to start. Because plus X is uh, the first far base in this direction is where I have my main farms. Even though I don't rely on the farms as much anymore, because I don't need as much bread. Usually nowadays, I will just hunt hoglins. 
they end up being pretty good food. I kept a few gaps in here in case I want to get out and put my head out. Here are some of those hoglums. I do not really fear them because I have a really good sword to fight them. With. but I think we're just not going to be out here for too long. And because the sword has mending, I don't need to worry about it pooping out. So that works out, and it's great when I can avoid getting hit, because then I don't have anything that I lose dur uh, durability-wise. So let's continue. So I think plus X amounts to east. So I think we're heading to far base 1 east. I have, this is kind of the standard form that most of my nether tunnels take, whether they're digging through solid rock or way up above the ground. I generally, I prefer this shape, usually with a few windows here and there, and occasionally with exits. This means I can pop out and get some XP if I want to, or gather some materials. Um, in some areas, there are uh, Endermen hunting grounds that I've set up, which are just places where they can't easily hit me and where I can pretty easily hit them. I now have a pretty decent stock of Ender Pearls. So here we are. This is... Let's see, is there anything we want to do with any of this? No. Well, actually, we can drop off the leather. Maybe drop off some of the excess pork chop. In we go. Okay, so this is the initial base that I built. I don't think there's really anything still left in here, but let's double check. Yeah, this is what I called my treehouse base, because it is built around a tree. And it's pretty cool. Uh, it's just, it's not very big. And eventually I thought, well, if I'm going to do a lot of serious farming here, I should uh, get things a little fancier. So I did. You can also see that I have a cow down there. And I have a horse in diamond armor. So that worked out pretty well. And here I have a little bit of a wider platform. Did I accidentally pick that up? Yes, I did. Okay, I do not like... It would be really nice to have some kind of a blacklist saying don't pick this thing up. Or just destroy this when it comes nearby. I would totally put rotten flesh on that list. Anyhow, this is my farming base. Yes, there is that gap down there. And here, it's just, it's, uh, I had enough material that I could do it right and make it nice. Nice shiny, uh, floor there. Nice red walls, nice gray ceiling. I like it. It's, um, it's a good setup, and you can see that I've done some nice farming here. Everything is looking pretty good. Probably have way more saddles than I need. But I found an enchanted fishing rod here. Uh, I think it was actually this one that had mending. And so that meant I was doing a lot of fishing for uh, spell books and stuff like that. I mean, enchantment books. Eventually I got this much better fishing rod that doesn't have that curse on it. So, uh, and I made it a little more spiffy. But because it has mending, I don't really ever need to repair it. And so that's a big plus. Uh, it looks like I accidentally picked up a crossbow. Okay, cool. So, a nice setup of all sorts of stuff. Don't know why I stuck some bows over here. Usually I try and keep all my um, gear in one chest. Anyhow. And the usual crafting stuff. Oh, 
even more of these things. Yeah, I should fix that at some point. Um, so let me show you my farms. So I kind of designed my own farms here. Or at least I, I think I designed these. It's possible I read about them and then forgot. But I, I have water flowing down. It goes into channels. Keeps the soil moist. And um, here I have a whole lot of wheat. Because initially I was making a lot more bread. A whole lot of wheat. They're not all at the same height. And I have like side strips that just provide some extra, extra light. This is for future expansion. Then I have a middle uh, set where I have carrots and radishes. have some cocoa here. Uh, I probably should get some more jungle trees so that I can plant some more cocoa. I have neither wart. And potatoes. Lots of potatoes. Uh, some melons. Uh, pumpkins. And... And over there, I have a few more things that are reserved for future use. So yeah, uh, I've put a lot of effort into making all this nice. Should make anything else that I need to do involving farming pretty easy because I have a setup that is going on. Oh, you have been hiding under here since night. Jerk. Okay, and did I oh, do some more arrows? Okay, that's good. Don't mind. Um. So one of the things you'll spot is that I built a um, sky bridge here. And actually, over a fairly long period of time, I've connected this all the way back to the mainland. You see that my X is 6,000, uh, 6, so it wasn't quick. Mm. But I enjoyed doing it, and I have a lot of much smaller mountainside bases, as well as a, a single base that I'm using to teach myself how to do... Um, to build redstone contra uh, contraptions. It's maybe around 2,000 way in that direction. Now here, there's a shipwreck. And I am very slowly, hopefully, uh, going to lower the water down so that I can expose the shipwreck to the air. Um, this project, I have not been keeping with it because it's a little bit boring. So I have a boat that I've used just to sail around here, and very occasionally I'll stand way out on the pier and do some fishing. Which is pretty satisfying. Um, there's a lot of desert on both sides, and I've cleared out some desert temples. It's going pretty well. Um, there is a bridge that I started to build over that gap that I must have run out of soil, and I never went back and finished it. Yeah, there's a lot of half forgotten projects out here. But that's okay. Um, let's head back into the Neither. Disorienting. Now here, this is a much more recent um, development. Or relatively more recent. It's not super recent. But, uh, but my rail continues to a second far base. Um, let's see, so this one is Farbase 1 East, so we're heading off to Farbase 2 East. And so for Farbase 2 East, it was actually after I had all of my near bases, or I had all my one, my Far 1 bases, so I was aiming for something a little different. So what I did was, rather than just uh, head way off in this direction and then see where the, uh, where the gate, uh, Neither Gate would take me. Instead, I just ran for a really, really long time. And then I built my base. And then on top of it, I built my Neither. So you'll see what I did in just a little bit. I can't remember why I had this bend, but there was probably a reason. So this rail is not complete. Um, do I have anything to cap that off? No. Okay. I still need to come back here and finish building this railway. Uh -huh. 
looks like I'm mainly... I must have been out of powered rail when I was doing this, because it looks like I have... I've laid the rail that I would use for most other things. So eventually I'll come back and finish this up. It's good, good to be reminded that, uh, that it's not done. But at least it's partly done. And the rail also helps to mark the way that I need to go. Now this area, unfortunately, is kind of full of ghasts. So, yes, I am above ground. But I have to have to have this kind of eye uh, eyesight blocker. I would like to have the rail go all the way up here. But yeah, I need to come back here with a lot of powered rail. So here we are. This is our... Um, also built... Looks like I've started on a passage some time back. I must not have been, been here for a long time because these are still there. Okay. But we're not going to head back in that direction. I don't remember what's there. We're instead going to head... Oh, you just spawned, didn't you? Okay, that's annoying. I don't like how the jumpy guys can very easily overwhelm you if you're not careful. If they somehow manage to, to slide while they're spawning. And they can be an unwelcome surprise. Okay, let's see. Oh, and there's another jumpy guy. Okay. Cool. Whoops. Okay, got one hit. That's not, not that bad. Okay, so what else do we have? Oh, we actually have some more rail. I will grab this. Yeah, I'll grab this now. So this is my far base two uh, in the plus five direction. Way up in the air. I thought it would be fun to have a floating island space that is just way, way up in the sky. So after running all the way out here and seeing, like, the village, I thought, well, let's do that. And also I have another kind of little experiment here that I'm starting um, where I'm just going to keep... I, I would like to expose the bottom bedrock to the sky, and it's not super exciting, but I'm hoping to eventually dig all the way down. Uh, right now, looks like I just have y equals 62, so I have a good ways to go, but it's going to be fun. And so eventually, like, this pit will just keep on expanding outwards and outwards as I need to widen it to go down, because I would like to have it be have natural steps all the way down. But yeah, the location here is pretty cool. And I might build a little more. I, I'm building some side islands and other stuff up here. Because we're kind of near the build height, which I think is 125. So I'm not sure if I, if I were to plant a tree here, whether it could actually grow all the way up. And also, if a creeper manages to get up here, it would be pretty disastrous. But overall... Things are good. Let's maybe grab that because there's no real reason to leave that here. Um, maybe grab that as well. Is there anything in here we want to bring back? Not really. Okay, so let's head back. I made this this gate a little bit wider. Eventually, I'm going to. Oh, oh yeah, one other thing. Um, there are some other villages in sight. There's one over there that you can see. There's obviously the one that, right by where I settled. And I think that there's one, yeah, one right there as well. And one way over there. So this is kind of, it's a village-rich area, which is nice. Let's just take a nap and head back. Of course, I didn't really know that. Uh, I only really knew about the one village when I was uh, building this base. But oftentimes when you get high enough up, you see things that you wouldn't otherwise see. There we go. Heading back. Yes. Actually, let's grab this. 
And we're going to head back to the central area. At least in the nether. And yeah, you can see some areas where I got a little bit too close to the ghasts. They got me. I might actually have to seal this passage. Maybe. Or at least not have it be this big open thing and instead have it be narrow slits. Anyhow, I have ideas. So yeah, this, this direction works out pretty well. And if I ever decide that I should go back to plant-based food, that first far base is a great place to grow it. Also, it's good for alchemy, because um, I can get nether... Uh, I'm, I have a nether wart uh, farm there. <coughs> This is the extent to which this thing can go without help. So, I think, yeah, Minecraft, it is a lonely world, and maybe if and when I start playing online, that might change. Uh, but I, I, I love the the ability to just have all these projects uh, to work on, and I like the creativity inherent in it. It reminds me a little bit of Second Life. Um, a long time ago, I used to have... Um, I used to be active on Second Life, and I would, uh, I would build programs inside my items, and I had my own little plot of land. It was neat. I, I doubt that that land still exists. I don't know if my character still exists. Uh, but for a while I was doing, like, your monthly fee to have a reasonable amount of land. Um, and that creativity was nice. I think it, it was a more social environment, though. Um, because for Second Life, I think there might have been ways to play offline. But by and large, you were there partly for the social stuff, too. Is there anything I want to cart back? Let's maybe grab the le uh, leather. Gold nugget. Let's maybe leave these excess arrows. Maybe grab the bone, because bone meal is actually one of those things that's surprisingly good in the game. Okay, and for the rest of this we have an intact minecart network that will get us all the way back. Yeah, so I sometimes miss Second Life. Um, in a lot of ways Second Life was more customizable. Because you had more real programming, um, one of the things I built was a broomstick uh, that, if you clicked on it, it would apply force out its uh, out its back and push you forward really quickly through the air. That was neat. You could build items that would talk. You could. Uh, I think the the one innovation that it was missing or at least a different design choice that it made was it wasn't block based so you had to deal with um, whoa I wonder what that was something interesting well yeah, Minecraft has always had these weird sounds that I've never fully understood but um by deciding that the block is the fundamental unit for positioning and to have most things be this kind of grid-based everything, you simplify the world, and, and by doing that you make everything a lot more predictable. And so in a way it makes creativity easier because you have traction on a, on a less slippery surface. The world is, is easier to understand. Let's maybe drop this stuff off in the chest. Okay, yes, yes, yes. And yes. And maybe actually this too. Cool. Is 
this actually in trouble? Oh, I guess it is. For some reason, for a long time, I thought that's, that was a one-way drop, but I guess it isn't. Okay, so this is the negative Z direction. And here, I might eventually extend the rail all the way up there, but for now it starts down here. Now this is a fairly exciting direction to expand in. I've found some cool stuff along the way. We will soon be at... Okay, no, that's not it. Um... I think that this is the direction that had a bastion. I, I might be misremembering. I could check my spreadsheet, but I'm not going to memorize that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. So here we go. Oh, oh, well, shoot. Okay, well, you have fun. So this is, um, this is a bastion. Or no, is this a stronghold? Bastion? No, stronghold. They have too many terms for these things. This is a fun structure for... Oh. Hello. Gotta be careful around the, these guys because they have a stronger form of poison that can... that will not stop at zero health. Attempting to dig out some of these. Okay, so this it took me a while to get used to the idea that for those guys, being aggressive is the right thing to do. Like you just want to be really, really aggressive, and don't give them time to uh, shoot at you. You just want to run straight at them and go for it. a kind of doom uh, mentality. Anybody nearby? Yes. Yes. Good. A jumpy guy. Hello, jumpy guy. Little jumpy guys. Okay, good. Be careful not to. There we go. Yeah, it's not actually that hard to get the the nether rods. And one of the things, my passage actually continues up here. I don't know if my minecart. Some of the problems. If some, if a. Oh, there my minecart is. Looks like he despawned because he got too far away from me. And, um... Oh, this is actually the end of, of my passage, apparently. Yeah, this is... So I only have one Nether Gate in this area. We don't have a second far base out here. Let's see, I don't remember which base is on the other end of this. But yeah, all of my far bases can be pretty distinct. Oh, right, this is my seaside far base. So here, I just thought it would be neat to... Uh, because when I came through the Nether portal for the first time, it just generated this little island. I quickly built a bridge to the, soar, uh, or to the shore, and then built a house on the bridge. And I have a cat out here. Hello, cat. And, yeah, nothing super interesting. This used to have a ridiculous amount of stuff in it because I never drained... I never brought stuff back. But yeah, so I, I have a little farm over there, but it turns out that this base is just surrounded by desert in all directions. It's 
uh, was a little bit of a surprise. Like, I, I do not know why so much desert generated there. Hello, cat. You stay there. Actually, don't quite remember how that cat got here. But yeah, there's just there's a little bit of woods. There's a a village over there where it doesn't have any people in it. For some reason, a lot of my villages have spawned without people. And uh, I have a, a boat that I've taken um, just to explore the area a little bit. And I have a little bit of a sky bridge that doesn't go anywhere yet. Um, and way off in the distance, you can see a, uh, a, a pillager fort. And I don't think that's the one. I, I have actually run once back to Central from here. It took me a long time. And I came across a pillager fort along the way that I burned to the ground. Because they were giving me a tough time, and I also want to know what it would be like to burn one to the ground. So I did. Um, but I don't think it was that one because that one still looks relatively intact. Yeah, so that seaside base is pretty cool. And I'm just trying to come up with new design ideas for building stuff. Um, I think that this actually doesn't go anywhere in particular. It, it, uh, it stops not too far in this direction. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty clear how I would build to a second far base if I wanted to in this direction. But I have not done so yet. So that's this direction. an ingenious thing in the game. Like, the distances are different there. I, I like that design element. Because uh, it gives you an incentive to come here and to build here. And it gives you a way to travel very far across the overland. Or the overworld. Yeah, I, I just, I think for the exploration focused people like me, it's it's fantastic. Because, like, any time I need, uh, I want to have a new adventure, like, really unknown stuff, I could just turn right back ar uh, around, go back up to that um, wall, dig myself a new few uh, hundred or thousand in that direction, and then uh, build another nether portal, and bam, I'm in the middle of nowhere. And then eventually I can connect everything together and have it be all civilized. Not particularly quickly, but it could happen. And it also gives you a certain amount of distance initially from all your established uh, stuff, which can be nice. Okay, so this direction. structured gaps is pretty safe. So here we go. And another jumpy guy. So here, continuing. 
I've been trying to provide enough light to prevent monster spawns. Haven't been fastidious enough, I don't think. I think it's mainly just that um, it's a little bit annoying to run out of torches. Oh yeah, here's where I first discovered soul sand. And, um, and so that let me build a nether ward farm outside of the nether. This is another direction where I think I only have one base out here. But this, this was an area where I would farm um, endermen, although I found a better place since. Now, was this my ranch base? This might have been my ranch base. Let's see. Oh. He must have wandered through after... Oh, he must have wandered through during one of my fights. And he was still angry. That's why he went after me immediately. Yeah, I think this is my... This is my Outback uh, base. This is kind of what I imagined an Outback ranch in Australia would look like. Or a ranch out in Texas. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it generated so far down, but what can you do? So for this, I went with a different design. I wanted a very open air feel, and I also didn't have much in the way of resources when I was building this space. So it's actually pretty much just an outdoor kind of mm. thing. Doesn't even have a roof, but it's pretty nice. Uh, a boat. Mm minimal stuff out here and uh, I this place is just packed full of horses and I might do some horse breeding out here I got some uh, start did a little bit of farming the farms aren't complete as you can see but you really kind of want that initially I wanted it for food but then I nowadays if I were to think about it, I probably would want it for um, more for horses uh, than for myself. Now one of the other things I, I found when exploring the area around here... Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Um, is my first uh, undersea temple. It is... I'm not going to swim all the way out to it, and I don't think I'd ever really built much in the way of a dock uh, here, but... That's weird junk generated in the air. But there, you can kind of see an island out there. That's an artificial island that I built as a base to go after the undersea temple that's right next to it. And so that temple, I, uh, I initially tried digging under it before I realized that the Elder Guardians would... Um, would still be able to curse you with mining fatigue, even if they couldn't see you. And so that didn't work out. Like, I got pretty close, and it was a pain in the butt to even get close to under, and then I suddenly got the curse. And with the curse, it's just, it's just far too slow to dig. So I stopped and did it the intended way, swimming down, but was kind of tempted to just muscle through it. Um... Yeah, lots of, lots of horses around here, so I might eventually end up breeding horses, and this would be a great place to do it. Um, here I have a slight variance on the design where I have a little bit of a lip in front so that when you jump into your farming area, you don't end up stomping on some, uh, some farm ground. But in general, like, yeah, my designs on these things, they continue to uh, evolve as I figure out better ways to do things. And it's easier to do it if I'm building a new one from memory than from doing something new in an existing system. So that's what I got out here. Like, nothing is super remarkable, just lots of farms and fields and stuff. But it is kind of a nice Australian or Texan outback. Another horse and some donkeys and stuff. So that's fun. Um, it, it is a little bit annoying that the nether portal is way down uh, underground. I might try to to fix that at some point. 
but it's not a super high priority. So that's that direction, and I don't really have anything further uh, in, in that direction. I don't have a second far base out here. May someday. But yeah, I was delighted when I came out here. I think this was the first area where I got access to soul sand. And I was looking for a long time because I wanted to start doing alchemy. And it was especially fortuitous, fortuitous, fortuitous because um, because if I was going to go after that undersea temple, I wanted to have uh, I didn't want to suffocate, and so potions of water breathing uh, they were pretty important to me to find a way to get, and I did. Also, it wasn't too long before here where I was uh, starting to enchant my items, which also helped with the underwater stuff. And so there's one final direction uh, to go. But this is a, a quite interesting direction as well, from my perspective. Again, uh, not everybody is going to enjoy Minecraft videos. I mean, that is kind of scary. I do not like having the guests kind of phase through the walls there. All it would take is a really bad fireball to ruin my day. Well, not ruin my day, but to be pretty annoying. Because it could kill me. Okay, so we're just about back home. Let's maybe move this one here next to there. Cool. So. We've gone in all directions, except for this way. Now, initially, I thought that I was going to build my first tunnel downwards in this direction. Because I want to start farming ancient debris. Didn't really work out. Oh, that's what it was. You can reach the portal from the ground area there, but you can't reach the 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 tunnel that way. To do the tunnel, you actually have to come up and do this. Okay. So off we go in the final of the four directions in the nether. this area up a little bit better. Might end up farming out those uh, these walls here because if you polish those bricks they're quite beautiful. One of the things I haven't found yet is uh, I think it's the it's either the Badlands or it's, it's some other rare biome where you can get terracotta. And I would love to be able to start building with that but I haven't found that um, biome yet. It's a little frustrating, but... Okay, so here's my first far base in this direction. Nothing... And what was... I don't really remember what, what things were like out here. What is... Oh, right, this is my... My, um, my sand's far base. This, uh... Yeah, this... This actually is a far base that I built the, the, the other way. I, I, I ran all the way out here, and then I ended, uh, ended up doing some mining, and I ended up building that, uh, that nether portal on the floor intentionally. This is probably the least far of my far bases. Uh, look, it's only 2,000 away. This is kind of just a desert hut. It used to be made mostly of sand. It no longer is. And I have a little bit of farming there. Let's see. Oh, good. Nobody's too close to let me sleep. Yeah, it's not particularly secure. But... I still have a good bit of... Uh, a reasonable bit of stuff around here. 
So this is a, um, this is one of these that I didn't decide to settle. And I just conquered it, but I think that, uh, pillagers will still spawn inside of here. I think. Well, I'm not seeing any right now, nor do I hear them. So maybe for some reason they're not. But with that other pillager village I showed you, they did. They just really kept on spawning. No, apparently... Huh. Maybe they don't spawn naturally in the desert, even inside their bases? I, I, I don't know. It's... I don't fully know the rules here. And it's also really pretty weird to have these ice structures spawning in, uh... What is that white block there? Is that snow? Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the biome temperature stuff, I don't really understand it and... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so there, there one is... One spawned. Um, but if I kill him, I'll get the curse, and I don't really want to get the curse. But you can do it this way. Oh, if, if you're careful. Oh, oh, bad day for them. There we go. Now let's put this out, because I don't really want this to burn. Is everything put out? Yes. Good. I don't think it actually damaged the structure. That's good. Yeah, I, d I was just trying to kill that guy without getting cursed. Cool. So, and, and yeah, naturally, this has a um, sky rail connection, uh, no, sky bridge connection back to my main base. It's a fairly long one. Covers some interesting ground. Let's head back down. Because we haven't seen all of the interesting stuff in this direction yet. Yeah, no, that'd take me back home. Okay. So where we want to go is over here. And this, unless I'm badly misremembering, this is where all the interesting stuff is. Because I have a far base in this direction, but I also have two branches leading off from here that go, you know, some, go to some pretty interesting places. And one of the things you'll notice, uh, I have levers controlling the cart. Uh, was this? No, this wasn't it. I have levers controlling the powered rails, and that can be nice because if I if I really want to stop, I can do it without worrying about uh, monsters stepping into the cart and taking it on a joyride like we saw before. Because sometimes you don't get your cart back. That is really frustrating, because usually I don't carry a spare car, and running uh, some of these paths is pretty annoying. Okay, so long passage over the lava, including, like with one of these, uh, the path went right under one of these uh, lava uh, waterfalls, and I decided that I did not want to bend the path, so it took me a while to engineer the problem away. Okay, so this is one of the first things, uh, one of the first interesting things that I want to point out. Uh, this railway is not complete. Again, I need to get some more powered rail. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of lighting things up as I go. This is a bastion. It's the second bastion that I've discovered, and one that I haven't fully explored yet. Um, initially, I was wondering if 
if I would just, uh, if I wasn't going to be able to find uh, much in the way of bastions, it was getting a little frustrating. I found this actually going the other way. I was, I believe that this is the pathway to um, uh, a mushroom fields biome, which is one of the rarest biomes in Minecraft. I really want to find one. It took me a, a fairly long time. Here's an experiment to grow a tree underneath her. Might not have given it enough space. While I'm here, let's see if that helps. Good, good, good. Okay, freeing things up a little bit. But I, I believe I found this via the overworld. And, uh, and then built the, the nether portal to, uh, to connect it. And, yeah, Mushroom Fields, it's a pretty and very peaceful uh, location. Uh, hostile mobs don't spawn here. Except for those, the the flying, you haven't slept enough creatures uh, late at night, which are fairly easy to avoid. And here I've built myself a minimal base. This is definitely like if you get too stressed, come out here, nothing's going to mess with you. I don't have much in the way out here. It's also novel. I think it's one of the very few bases I have that has two doors. But yeah, this is just, it's a vacation home. Also have, I haven't yet experimented with it a lot yet, but this variant of soil, I think it's called mycelium, and it will infect all the soil around it and make it possible to plant mushrooms. Oh yeah, there's also mushrooms, which are cow variants that have mushrooms on them. Cool stuff. So yeah, entirely peaceful, very relaxing, infectious soil. And so I grabbed a little bit of the soil with some silk touch pickaxes in case I want to start growing some of it on the mainland. That's for a, a later day. I'm going to have to think carefully about if I want to start doing that. Just in case... Um, just in case that ends up being a little harder to control than I, than I think. But... Okay, I wonder if at some point I'll come back and see a tree or not. So that's that's the one interesting thing. Pretty interesting. Rare biome. The there's a second interesting digression uh, out here. Let's see. Still moving through this long, careful passage. Gonna have to come back and explore this thing at some point. And I'm gonna have to finish with this rail. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world that your vacation home is a little bit off the grid. Let's see, how's my armor doing? Still doing okay. Cool. Oh, actually, one of the things I normally like to do is. Largely because... Oh, no, this already has it. Good. Okay. Um, yes, this way. I like to stick a brick right at the end of a track to um, so that the rail car doesn't come entirely off the... You guys fell down into the lava. Anyhow... Um, I like to stick a brick right at the end of the track so that the rail car doesn't end up flying off the uh, off the rails when it reaches the end. Okay, now this one is a complete rail. This one, I was very, very excited to... Uh, basically, I spent a long time leveling up a cartographer until he s sold me a woodland explorer map. Took me a long time, but I journeyed across the uh, across the overworld until I found a woodland mansion, and that was cool. It's, woodland mansions are great; they're really neat structures. 
and I built a base right in front of it because I knew I'd, I'd, or I'd never done it before. I was worried about getting killed. And then eventually I moved in. And I've been slowly carpeting the place to stop the monster spawns because there's quite a lot of monsters that spawn in this place. And then I built this rail. I mean, first I built the tunnel, which took me a while. Uh, but I had the innovation of let's dig up. So you see some bedrock on the ceiling there. Uh, that What that gets me is it means that I'm not going to have these really long passages where I'm building the passage over empty space. Instead, I'm just digging near the, uh, near the ceiling of the world. And that's much easier, because all you need to do is make sure your pickaxes are up to snuff. You don't need to worry about running out of materials. Now it is a fairly long trip. Because the Woodland Mansion was not well aligned to just a straight shot in any uh, cardinal direction from the origin actually more or less uh, like at uh, 45 degrees. Here we're getting pretty close. And the other thing to my d delight and horror is that when I came out, this was my first uh, fortress. And so, like, it literally, the gateway that I used to go from, uh, from the, uh, Woodland Mansion back to the overworld was, uh, this is a little dangerous. I do not like that. Okay, that's, that's better. Um, it opened right up into this. And given that I had not seen one of these before, that was a treat. But it also, uh, I, I don't know if that's the way that the game likes to generate things or not. It was very surprising. Like, it was not unwelcome, but it was pretty surprising to just have, like, literally, I popped out of the portal and this is what I saw. I mean, I stole some gold bricks and killed a lot of creatures along the way, but yeah, it was, it was a surprise. So let's show... this is where I built it. And over here is the entrance to my woodland uh, mansion. And yes, I'm saying mine because I have claimed it. I have put down quite a lot of carpet to prevent monster spawns. And eventually I'm probably going to find a way to not have all my stuff be right in front of the nether portal. But I'm enjoying having this place. Uh, I don't know if I need to carpet in here or not. Carpet would not look good in that room because it's supposed to be a bath. But yeah, uh, it was delightful to explore this place and clear it out. And I think there still might be hidden rooms hidden away in here. I, I have the first floor completely um, conquered. Like, I don't believe that there are places where, which are uncarpeted, where monsters can spawn down here. The second and the third floor are not done yet. And I might need to stick carpet on top of these things, too. I'm not entirely certain. But, but yeah, it was, it was really cool to have, um, to add this to my list of bases. And it's, I've dropped uh, several more torches here to brighten it up as well. But yeah, pretty neat. And uh, now the place is surrounded by a super dense forest. I was thinking about lighting the forest on fire just to clear some of the trees out, but I was worried that the woodland uh, mansion would catch on fire. I don't think I could manage to prevent... Uh, I, I don't think I could manage to, uh, to put it out in time. Like, it just might burn to the ground if any fire comes near it. So I'm not going to take that risk. suppose what I could do is encase it, but that would be an incredible amount of work, and I am not entirely certain that fire does not, that the fire would uh, respect that. Oh, uh, where is my rail? Is it that way? 
Ah, yes. It's that way. Yeah, so I haven't fully exp I haven't even fully explored the, um, the Nether uh, remnant yet. Like, the twisty area I've done, but the giant's blasted out room, uh, I have yet to really explore that area. It's another thing I'm looking forward to. Took a fair amount of care to make sure there was enough power trail to carry me through there. I might have gone a little bit overboard on the power trail. That, no. Finally, I'll show you the second far base out here. And then after that, I think I just have two more things to show. A little bit of what I tend to do underground, and then, uh, very, very recently, I found a stronghold. So I gathered enough eyes of Ender uh, to have them take me to... Um, have them point me at where it was, and it wasn't a surprising place. But we'll, we'll get, to get, uh, get to that. Yeah, I was a little surprised actually here to find um, that you can get neither sand this far up. I thought it didn't generate this high. Um, but I've collected it largely because I don't, I didn't want to be slowed down by walking over it, but um, if I had known, if I had known earlier I might not have dug so far down for that previous nether gate that was in the nether sands. It doesn't really matter, though. Might as well grab that, and that, and that, and that, to melt them down. Okay. And if I remember right, this, um... So two interesting things here. This is one of the, uh, the gate up here is one of the few times where I've tried to make the Neether not look like the Neether. I've used a lot of uh, overworld blocks to convert the area around the gate. And then for the uh, base at the other side of this, you can kind of see this. Whoa, hello. Oh, that's fine. Actually, really funny. I guess if if they were chasing you, you could actually just drop some minecarts in front of them to hold them in place. So here, I did not find a great place to build a, a base for a while. Oh, some iron. Thanks. So I thought this uh, this is one of the first time first times where I tried to uh, to move. The Nether portal. It wasn't successful. For some reason, I, I think I didn't. Well, yeah. The 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 Nether pairing logic does not. It's not something I've mastered entirely. So, like, I picked up that Nether uh, portal. Actually, I picked picked it up in a different location. Uh, because it was like way way down beneath the ground. And I thought, well, I will take it and I'll build it uh, again right by where I uh, where I want to build a base. This is what I consider to be like my waterbed base, where I want to go with the theme. Actually, it's kind of a stupid theme. But I thought I will go with the theme of having the base be in the middle, uh, be stuck in water. I'll get that finished up. Uh, maybe drop that off. And 
it's it's not terrible like it's certainly distinct it also has this cool feature of having some of the water here be collapsed or I mean some of the the, the floor here be collapsed so if you want to head down into the caves from there it's really easy or head back up because of the peculiarities of how water physics works in Minecraft. So that's neat. And nobody is going to be able to, uh, like, nobody's going to approach me that way. Um, the ceiling is not quite complete. So it's a, it's a nice setup. I, I like this space a lot. But I tried, uh, I was hoping that this portal would replace that other, uh, the one that was way down beneath. And it does in one direction, but not in the other. And I've tried many times to get rid of the, uh, to, to actually have this be the portal, but I think we're just a little too far apart in some of the dimensions. So it's not a complete success, but not a complete failure either. Like, by digging that passage, I at least have fairly easy access to... Um, actually, let's grab some of this. Fairly easy access to that base... Good. That should do the trick. So we're going to head back and stop with the Nether stuff. Yeah, there's a... Um what I expected, but always happy to have a little bit more uh, meat. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I like having that turned to off so that I can very rapidly head off if I want to in, uh, in the direction of my Woodland Mansion base. I, I like. I can't imagine the the Nether would probably be pretty boring without all these different biomes. So it's nice that they have some more of this variety and some more of these structures. It gives the, the zone a lot more character. It's also nice just to have some areas where you don't have that uh, gas always trying to blast you. Again, we're coming up on the area. Yeah, this here is the area where there's a lava stream coming down. And I had to... It, lava is very frustrating. Like, if you try and block it from going... From raining down on you, it tends to bend back in its original direction. Huh. Uh, it tends to bend back in its original direction. So you need to be quick, careful, and clever to manipulate it. At least in the ether. I think this a lot of a lot of dealing with this stuff has to do with confidence and knowledge. And that being far less afraid of gas helps. Knowing how to handle each type of enemy helps a lot. Just it helps you not be in fear all the time. I still don't like fighting gas, but. to take us the rest of the way home. Now, there are some structures in Minecraft where I really think it's worth trying to make them professional. And so I've gone the extra effort to make everything match. The, the base, the, the farming base is an example where like my floors, walls, and ceilings all have a consistent theme. Um, for a lot of the other things I build, I just don't care as much. 
um, because they're not really there for show. Okay, let's heading back into. We're done with the Nether for now. Let's head back into the overworld. Um, maybe, maybe we'll drop these off here just in case we decide that we need them. Like, this is not a bad place f for carrying stuff from location to location. Okay. Um, anything else we want to bring? No. Okay, cool. Let's maybe just do this real quick. Gonna melt these swords down just for a little more gold. For a long time, I didn't care about gold at all because not a lot of things I build require it. But then I came to, as I've done more rail projects, powered rail requires gold. And so it's one of those things where you actually want to make sure that you have plenty. Okay, let's drop that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll leave this here for now. We'll leave this here for now. And the leather and maybe the surplus food. Cool. Um, so. My mind. Be careful, you can just hop over that. So my mind, I generally, I generally like to do a double wide entrance, and usually I'll try and have these stairs. Even though you have to be a little bit more careful with headroom with the stairs, and I usually dig down to um, y equals eleven or y equals 10, somewhere around there, because this is where diamonds get pretty, uh, pretty popular. And usually I'll build two high, but occasionally I'll build three high. And I've started to do like a compromise between like these strip mining tunnels which are better at finding like these little bits of ore, or at least they're a lot more efficient because you're not digging everything up, with the creating this kind of aesthetic. And like this is most prevalent around this, my, my oldest space, where I have these big open rooms that I've cut out over a long period of time. But I I'll also have these really long passages that will, well, this is not one of them, but I do have passages that just go forever. And they will link the underground of my various bases together, which is pretty convenient. I've never really thought about railing them. It's too hard to keep these areas clear of monsters, unlike the sky rail. But, um, but it's nice to have the passage there. And very occasionally I'll dig down to the um, to the bedrock, but that's now pretty rare. Just because the ground down there is pretty irregular, so even walking is annoying. Okay, so we have everything but... Well, okay, so let's drop this off. Uh, drop off the slime block. Where, is, where am I collecting? Just here. Okay, cool. And so let's ho head over to my most recent discovery. No, this isn't the right way. Yeah, this is the other side of that long sky bridge over to the desert uh, base, the desert far base. Um, okay, so it's this way, I think. 
I guess what I what I might do at some point is make sure that I have powered rail very near the starting points, where uh, where my uh, where my minecarts rest, just so that I don't have that long pedaling of the minecart over to the powered area to make this the, the startup a little quicker. I might do that. It's kind of nice to be back over even that short of a break. Um, actually, no. That that sky bridge that I talked about back there that wasn't to uh, the desert base. That was to the to the farm base. The desert base is actually this way. We'll be heading a little bit further in that direction on the way to my most recent discovery, which is the Stronghold. So we're first going to pop down and take a nap so that it's daytime. Skeleton horses are really pretty cool looking. Although it's annoying to if they they're a little too easy to get killed. And if they get killed, you can't easily replace them. Just because they're pretty rare. Anyhow. So this if we were to just stay on this forever, this would take us out to that desert base. Since eventually, like, I like having my sky bases connect. It's just doing that takes a really, really long time. So, where the, um, the Ender, uh, the Eye of Ender pointed me at was, surprisingly, uh, this, uh, this, uh, zombie village that I had discovered some time back. Uh, and never really did very much with it, because I, for some reason, I think it's either a bug or a perk in Minecraft Bedrock. And you can see I built kind of a celebratory structure in front. But uh, an, a very large percentage of villages spawn uh, as zombie villages, and so you have all these annoying cobwebs and stuff. So it pointed me here. And so I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if it's beneath. So I dug down. Uh, actually, I didn't dig down here. I, I, I dug down... Let's see if we can find the original entrance, because I think the area where I dug down was right beneath the, um, the fountain. Like, there's a fountain right around here somewhere that's like a meeting place if this were not a zombie village. Ah, yeah, here it is. This is the fountain. And somewhere around here... Oh, is that a chest? I don't think I've... Ah, empty chest. Okay. So, yes, this... Somewhere around here... Ah, this might be it. Actually, let's not do it that that way. But um, but yeah, I I ended up thinking maybe the wiki said that um, the game, uh, uh, particularly on Bedrock, likes to place these things under zombie villages, and sometimes it uh, co-locates them with uh with abandoned mine shafts. So down I went. This is not uh, this is uh, this is an escape hatch that takes me directly to where I'd want to go. But 
I found another entrance into the stronghold. I think it was over this way. And it just looked like an, uh, an abandoned mine shaft. And so I was wandering around in here, and then I started to occasionally see these walls. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it must have uh, overwritten some of this, uh, some of this with that. Actually, let's do something stupid. Yep, that was stupid. Okay, um, anyhow. So, uh, so I was wandering through, and I kept on seeing these walls, and I was excavating around them. And eventually, I, to my great delight, I saw this through the window, and I thought, oh, that, whoops, oh, that, ah, darn it. Okay, that was stupid. Um, so I thought, oh, that must be the, um, the, the end gateway. And it was, and so... At the time, I, I didn't, uh, I think like maybe four of these came pre-filled, but it was easy enough to go back and um, get what I needed to wrap it up. I have not actually been through here yet, and I want to see what the next expansion to Minecraft is before I do, on the chance that maybe it's, uh, maybe it's going to be a revision of the end. And if it is, I would prefer that my end be ungenerated when I go through for the first time so that any changes they make, I get to enjoy. Because I'm a little bit worried, like, a I have a lot of uh, overworld mapped out, and I, I have uh, the Neither reasonably well mapped out. If, if they introduce new biomes or anything like that, then I'm going to need to really head pretty far out to start seeing that stuff. Which is fine, and I don't mind doing it. But for the end, I think it's a relatively constrained environment. And so you might, uh, particularly if they make revisions to the central area, I might not get to enjoy them. Uh, at least not without starting a new game. And I'm a little loath to do that. So I uh, guess might as well just talk while we take this out to the desert area. Um, so I'm going to save the end until we know what the next uh, next uh, area is going to be. And also, I'm going to keep on beefing up my gear. Right now, I, I, I'm wearing enchanted diamond uh, gear, generally. And I have a sword that I really like because it's mending, but I'd like to get mending on some more of my stuff. That was a, um, a mountain pass base. And I have a whole bunch of those spread throughout the, uh, the world. But So I would like to, whenever I first go to the end, I'd like to have the some really good gear uh, to do it. And I'm, I'm in no real hurry, because I'm still enjoying uh, everything without having been to the end yet. But, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping... That's because uh, I think that's kind of how Mojang works. They hear that a certain area is, or they feel that a certain area needs work, and then eventually they go and do it. And presumably they change the generation, the uh, the generations uh, part of the code, so that it, uh, if a chunk has not yet been generated, then it has the potential. Uh, like, I, it doesn't generate the entire world space at once. Because if it did, all of your, your game files would be huge. Um, so instead, it, it uses the seed and it uses what it's already generated. So that whenever you could see a chunk, presumably, or otherwise have some kind of a slow, gradual laying out of, of chunks, first time you could see it or the first time you enter it, that's when it generates it. And so, uh, and so what this means is that the only areas that fully exist inside this map presumably are the chunks that I've seen or entered. And so, yeah, I'd like to wait a little bit. Actually, that looks like maybe a town over there that I might not have been to yet. 
Oh, and another one way out there. Yeah, so, so that's why I'm waiting. And yes, over here you can see that we have traveled overland to, uh, to that area that we traveled to via the Nether Gate before. saying, or like YouTube uh, Minecraft people keep on talking about the the watering holes in the desert being quite rare. Uh, that hasn't been my experience. I've seen a fair number of them. I mean, there's one right over there, but I've seen them in plenty of other places. Maybe it's just that I've explored a lot of deserts. Oh, yeah, and you can see over there that there's a desert town slash castle that just happened to have one of its high, relatively inaccessible uh, bits easily connected to my sky bridge. So that was cool. And yeah. Here we are, just more of that desert and our little thing down there. And eventually, I might uh, might continue this further. Anyhow, that's that's been my Minecraft world. And a, a uh, maybe a week or two ago, I made uh, the snapshot. I made the world as it was available as a zip file um, for download. I posted on Twitter. Um, if anybody's interested in grabbing this world, uh, this bedrock world, and uh, playing with it. Uh, can have your own adventures with my uh, with the character that I started and with the world. That's cool. Uh, if you want a more updated version, let me know and I'll do a new snapshot. Um, right now, I don't really have a plan to keep on doing these regularly, but if somebody asks, uh, I wouldn't mind. And the I uh, the spreadsheet uh, the spreadsheet that I use to organize all of this is also available. And that's probably a little more generally useful because uh, if I consider if I consider a place to be interesting, chances are it doesn't have a lot to do with how much time I've spent there. So what you might find instead is just a unmodified version of, uh, of all that. Like, I still think this would be an interesting world if I didn't have my sky bridges reaching everywhere. Oh yeah, that town, I, I did build an extension of the sky bridge. Out there. But you might enjoy... If if you like playing around uh, in Bedrock, you might enjoy starting with the with what I started here. Now, this is a little bit of a mystery. Like, why does the generator ever produce these super tall rooms that cannot be reached from the ground? Like, all this stuff, I built stairs down, but there's no way that, like, somebody on the ground could actually make it up here. This is this is my bridge here leading into that tower with the stairs, but I don't know. I, I guess there's a lot about the, the generator that doesn't really make sense. Like generating towns without any people in them, but but they're not uh, cobweb full, uh, filled or anything like that. Um, generating all these super dangerous gaps in the ground. I think it'd be neat to have uh, a villager in Minecraft that just goes around preparing things, like removing cobwebs, fixing homes, filling dangerous gaps in the ground, having like a, a villager mechanic. That would be neat. I mean, I guess sometimes uh, players might be a little bit annoyed if they if they enjoy creating death traps or stuff like that. 
Um, like right now, there's a certain niceness that generally in Minecraft, if you build it, it stays. And the terrain doesn't shift around a lot on its own, apart from a few blocks that, uh, that will obey physics, like sand or gravel. But otherwise, like things tend to stay the way that you leave them. And so having a, a villager mechanic would ruin that, or it would change that a little bit, but I think I would prefer having it be that way. Like, I, I really don't, like, if I find a new village that I am coming to care about and like, I have to do a lot of repairs just to feel like it's not a death trap. But that's just me. Maybe a lot of people, they don't care. Maybe they don't really use villagers, stuff like that. But, uh, oh well. Anyhow, yeah, this, this has been my world. Um, I've had a really great time with Minecraft so far. Um, I'm looking forward to see what expansions do in the future, and I'm enjoying slowly learning more about uh, how to build redstone contraptions. Um, it's fairly different from the programming that I know. Like, I'm a scientific programmer in real life, good in Python, good in C, uh, 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 Perl, languages like that. This, this is much more of a physical kind of programming. I suspect probably the people who would be really, really good in, in Minecraft who are existing programmers might be the, uh, the kind of people who build, um, who do... Oh, oh, whoops. Okay. Did not mean to do that. Oh, no. Come back. This is kind of funny, but but the kind of people who do lot, uh, logic gate programming, like uh, program in, in Verilog and stuff like that, and program FPGAs, and like they probably would really have a blast with Minecraft because that's kind of what their programming is. It's a very component-oriented programming. Um, not really the way I tend to think about these things. Am I going to lose my minecart here? Maybe. I think that's the danger of... When you have moving entities move out of your current chunk... Well... Oh well. At least I'm pretty near my mansion base, so if I need to craft a new one, it won't be a big deal. But yeah, they, they'd have a blast at this kind of programming. It looks like it landed successfully and the creeper despawned along the way. Which is a pretty good outcome. And yeah, it's, so I've, I've also been slowly lighting up everything around here just because it was annoying to be doing heavy duty crafting and then have some, uh, have creepers drop in from the ceiling and, uh, or uh, from the entry stairs and blow stuff up. Like that was always tragic. Cleaning up after it was always a huge pain in the butt and this is super, super frustrating. But with a little bit more lighting, it doesn't happen so much. Boop. Boop. Okay. Great. Well, uh, I'm happy to have shown any uh, you any of this. If anybody has ideas on what they'd like to see, if for some reason you decide that I'm... Oh, yeah. Here's a little experiment that I've been doing here with... Uh-oh. Okay. Just a spider. Good. Not a creeper. Um, it's a it's a mechanism that that's an auto farm for uh, sugar sugar cane. It kind of sort of works. I have a better version of it elsewhere. I have a an area where I'm experimenting with contraptions. But yeah, this has been my world. Um, and if you have ideas for what you'd like to see from a future video from me, if for some reason you would like to see a future video from me, let me know. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Um, if you would like to have a copy of this world uh, with the current version, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to provide that. Uh, yep, well, take care and bye-bye.